Hello everyone, welcome back to lesson 11 of how to make iPhone apps with no programming experience. In this lesson, we're going to lay down the groundwork and we're going to expose the elements of our user interface so that they can be manipulated with Swift code. In the previous two lessons, you learned about UIKit, which is a set of classes that Apple provides to make app building easier for us. Well, did you know that all of these elements we've added to our storyboard here they are actually part of UIKit. So for instance, these image views that we added to display images, well, the official class name for these guys is UI image view. I'm just gonna quickly pull up the UIKit reference and I'm gonna search for the official name here, UI image view, and you can see it's part of UIKit. And this object is, or this class is meant to display images. Going back to the Xcode, another example, this button that we added, the official class name for it is UI button. So if I search for that, there we go, there it is. So we've actually been working with UIKit already by adding these pre-built elements onto our storyboard. So in the previous two lessons, you learned that when we're building an app project in Xcode, what we're doing is we're merely building classes and these classes get turned into objects when we run the app and the objects are actually interacting with each other to uh, display your project and to uh, provide the functionality for your app. When we were working on our user interface, it might not have felt like we were working with classes, but in fact, we were. I just showed you that all of these elements, they are classes in the UI kit framework. So by dragging them onto our UI view here and specifying all of these uh, configuration, these attributes for these elements, Xcode is gonna take all of this visual information and it's going to create instances of these classes or objects of these classes when the app project runs. So for example, uh, when we run this project, Xcode would create an image view object here, an image view object here, and then assign it the image that we've specified in the inspector pane. Uh, same thing with the buttons and labels. Xcode would create objects for all of those classes that we've specified here, and it would assign them to the right places, and that's how our view would be created in memory. So the next question becomes, how do we get access to these objects in memory so that we can modify them? So for example, how would we change an image once the app is running? Well, if you remember back in the MVC lesson or the model view controller lesson, who manages the view? The view controller, right? When we created the project, this class was already created for us, this view controller. And when this view gets created in the storyboard, it actually gets assigned to the view property of this view controller. So let us examine this view controller class. First of all, this statement up here, import UIKit, just specifies that we're going to be using UIKit classes in this view controller class. Now you can see here that the view controller class actually is a subclass of the UI view controller class. If we search in our UIKit reference document, we might have to look quite a bit. So here is the UI view controller class as part of the UI kit framework. Now the UI view controller class contains a lot of pre-built functionality for displaying the view, managing the view, so on and so forth. So what Xcode does for us is creates a brand new class and then it subclasses from that and allows us to um, specify custom behavior for our view controller. By default, we have two methods that are overridden for us. So view did load is an overridden method from the UI view controller class. And this method gets automatically triggered when the view specified in our storyboard has loaded. That means that Xcode has turned all of this visual information into objects and has assigned it to the view controller. Then this method will fire. And then inside this method, we can add any code that we would like to uh, manipulate the uh, elements in the view if we need to at that point in time. 
Another method that is overridden is the did receive memory warning method. And this method gets fired when memory is low, when our app is running. And in here, we can specify some code to manually free up some of our uh, objects or assets or data, whatever, to free up some memory manually. Most likely, we won't have to specify anything in this method because Xcode does a pretty good job of managing our memory within our app unless we're doing something really strange. All right, so I still haven't told you guys how we're going to uh, get a handle on those objects from the storyboard from this view controller. Well, we're going to do that through what are called IB outlet properties. You've already learned what properties are. IB outlet is simply a keyword that specifies that that property is referencing an object that was created from the storyboard. So let me go ahead and show you guys how we're going to use IB outlets and get a handle on those elements from our storyboard. Up here in the upper right hand corner, we can go into what's called the assistant editor. This button with looks like two circles that are intersecting with each other. So let me click that. And what's going to happen sometimes, and in my case here, uh, we're looking at two panes of code. It's going to turn your editor into a left side and a right side. What we want to do is click the storyboard from our file navigator, and then you're going to see the storyboard on your left, and you're going to see the code on the right. One word of warning, if you see manual up here, what you want to do is just click on that, and then go down to automatic, and then choose view controller. And that is going to just uh, grab the right file for the view controller, sorry, for the view that you're looking at in the storyboard. Now I'm going to make some space because I can't really um, get a good view of the storyboard and the code editor, which is what we're going to want to do. So I'm going to go into the upper right. I'm going to hide the navigator. I'm going to hide the inspector or the utilities pane on the right hand side and I'm just going to scroll my view into view and then now I'm going to show you that creating IB outlet properties is actually really easy what you what you're gonna to want to do is hold down control on your keyboard and then just click on the element that you want to create an IB outlet for and then when you're dragging as you're holding down uh, control on your keyboard you're gonna see this blue line and you're gonna drag it over here on the right hand side and you're gonna see a little message pop up insert outlet or outlet collection and then just let go and you're gonna get this little pop-up menu here so make sure that connection says outlet and for the name uh, I was dragging it from the right hand uh, image there so I'm just going to call this right image view the type is going to be image view and we're going to leave the storage as weak for now. Now this is going to, if you pop that open, it's going to say strong or weak and by default it's going to be weak. Now in the future, we're going to talk about memory management and that's when it's going to be clear why we're going to have weak. But for now, leave it as is and we're going to click this button connect. What it's going to do is create this line of code for us, IB outlet weak var right image view and then you can see the data type followed by this exclamation mark. Now we haven't talked about optionals yet, but what this exclamation mark specifies is that this property will have a value in it because as soon as the view has loaded and this object is created, it's going to be assigned into this property right here. Now if you can't get that control click and drag method to work just for some reason, you can also just type it out. So let me show you an example of that. So just follow that line, type out IB outlet weak var, and this time I'm going to type left image view, UI image view. I'm going to write that. At this point, what we're going to do is go into our storyboard. We're going to right click on this image view. It's going to pop up a little menu and underneath new referencing outlet, just click and drag that circle. You can left click it and drag it up to this yellow circle up here or you can drag it up to the view controller line in your document outline. If you let go, it's going to show you all of the properties or the IB outlet properties that you can connect this image view to. 
you don't want to connect it to the right image view because the other elements are already connected to that. Uh, make sure you connect it to the left image view. Now, if you accidentally do it, I'm going to show you how you can correct it because Xcode is not going to stop you from doing that if you want. Uh, well, so again, make sure you're uh, assigning this new element to the new IBL property that you just did. Um, just as a way to show you guys something uh, that's incorrect, I'm going to choose right image property. So right now that you can see that connection has happened. And right now, both of these elements are connected to right image view. Now that's going to cause problems for us. How we're going to fix that is we're going to right click on that image view again, and we're just going to uh, break that connection. It's going to show you which property it's connected to. So click X to break it, and then let's just repeat that. And this time I'm going to choose left image view. So you can see now it's connected to that property. Now another thing that uh, beginners often stumble on is sometimes when they type out the IB outlet property, they accidentally make a typo and all they do is they get rid of the property like that. And when you run your app at this point, it's actually going to crash because you've deleted this line of code that specifies the IB outlet property, but the element in your storyboard actually is still connected to it. See, if I right click that image view, it's still connected to left image view, um, but it no longer exists in our code. So that's going to cause a crash. Uh, and what, how you're going to fix that is again, just right click on the element. And you're going to click X to break it off. Okay. So I'm going to just hit undo now. And so I've got the property back. Um, so far I've connected these two images. We're going to connect some more elements. Okay. Uh, let's connect the, um, the label here. Sometimes it gets hard to click because you've got, you know, a whole bunch of different elements stacked on top of each other. You can even do it from here. Hold down control and then just drag a line from that label. This is the score label because we're going to want to update that score label. I'm going to call it the left score label. And then I'm going to do that with this one here as well. Remember both ways of creating outlets. Uh, right score label. And just like that, you've exposed these four elements to the view controller. So whenever you need to manipulate any of these four elements, all you need to do is specify them by name like this, and you're going to have full access to manipulate any of the properties for that element. And we're going to do that in the next lesson. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Bye for now.